Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. It is Monday, October 23rd. <clears throat> and uh, I see first up on our order we have the Sunderland Pack 8 Weeblos Den 2 of the Cub Scouts here. So what brings you guys here tonight? Good evening, Select Board Committee. Thank you for being able to meet with us. We represent the Sunderland Pack 8 Weeblos 2 Den. As part of our community program, we are looking to give back to the Sunderland community and donate some of our time to the Sunderland 300th anniversary celebration next year. As part of our project, we would like to plant flowering bulbs that would open in the spring to celebrate the 300th anniversary. We were wondering what kind of permission we would need to plant those bulbs at the Welcome to Sunderland signs entering, entering the town and also at the town park signs. We are wondering if the select board is the right committee to ask the question to in order to gain permission to do our project this fall. The flower bulbs would be a donation to the town we do not need any town, need the town to provide the bulbs. Thank you very much for considering our request. Do you have any questions or, of our scouts, or do you have any recommendations for this project? Um, Go ahead, you start. Uh, I, I don't have any questions at the moment, but I, I want to say thanks. Um, I think it's a really nice thing that you guys are doing, and um, I think not only you're not only donating bulbs, but you're also donating your time, and I think that's a, a really important thing. Um, <clears throat> I think that's one of the reasons why we're we're up here doing this too, um, and I, I think it's a, a really neat thing that you guys are doing. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> oh, Jiminy, I have one question. I want to echo Dave's point about uh, the chairman's point about coming and volunteering. That's great stuff. That said, don't let it end with scouts. Keep volunteering, keep yeah. doing the right thing, because that participation is the right participation, which makes a full community. So now for my question. If, and I'm not a gardener, this is my wife's area of expertise. If you were gonna plant bulbs, when would you need to do it? This fall or in the spring? This fall. This fall, okay. Do you guys have like a day plan that you wanna do it or? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. uh, we heard the welcome to Sunderland sign. So this area here at the intersection, the women's club is, is a woman who is, is worth connecting. The women's club manages all the plantings there. And if you wanted to coordinate colors, maybe, I would suggest talking with Tom Zimnowski, <clears throat> and we can, we can make that connection about if there's a color theme that's come up with respect to the 300th. I'm not sure of that, but mm. you know, if, if you guys went, all yellow and they were all green. It's like, well, we know your flowers. Yeah. But you may, you, may want, you may want to be able to touch base, and we can have Sherry touch base with uh, the, the, the pack leader. And you said the town park, too? Was that? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be, that'd be really nice. <clears throat> My son used to be one of you guys not, not that long ago. Anyway, at least I don't think so. <laughs> but See, the, the, request, nice. the request is, is just, a, is just a, a beautiful thing. Expanding on the request, do you have any questions of us? Any at all. We can let it rip. <laughs> Perfect. No. no, we got a big smile on the front. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's always go. awkward, right? <laughs> Almost as awkward as having to sit up there and talk in front of everybody, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great job. Yeah, just check with them, and then um, were you thinking about out in the middle there, um, um, or were you? There, but if you had mm -hmm. um, other suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're thinking about like the the, the like state entrance to the signs and yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. should be fine. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. So we would we would want to touch base with with our with our, our state. Fortunately, the district two director happens to live in town. Yeah, and they're so usually can, pretty good about that. We can work with that as well. So we have two pieces of homework here. One is how to coordinate in connection, uh, get in contact with the PAC. And then we have two questions that we're going to ask. One is with the state, 
and then, and the second is connecting you guys uh, and gals with uh, the 300th committee. Again, just on, on not so much timing, but what kind of flowers, okay? Great, and we'll make sure that's taken care of in the morning, because homework, get it done. Yep. We really appreciate Perfect. it. Thanks so much, everybody, really do. Thanks a lot, guys. We look forward to it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Thanks. so much. And conveniently enough, you guys are right there next. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> Who's going to stand up and read it, though, Dave? <laughs> See, if you come in with like a kerchief on or something, it might have helped, you know? <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Uh, so I see you guys are in here for a one day liquor license. A beer tasting at the maze. I seem to have heard about that somewhere too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I see we've seen we've heard back from everybody involved. Um, I don't think there are any. Yeah, you got to keep that door open, please. Hey Bob, you want to leave that open? You just are you lock? <laughs> he's, he's locking it. Locking them all out. <laughs> don't lock us in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so we've heard from the police chief, the building inspector, the fire chief. Um, I know the police chief brought up a question uh, going oh, forwards inspector. about mm -hmm. the building inspector, but um, I didn't see any issues at all. None. Regarding this. Um, and we've got all our paperwork covered and everything, right? Seems that. Um, so, yeah, this is probably going to be similar to like the Chili Fest in a way, I would suspect, right? Yeah. Except it's one day. One day, it is nope. three hours in total. Um, so we will start serving. Basically, there will be brewers set up inside the maze, um, and people's job is to find their next beer. Basically, I was just going to ask that because this is sort of the part where you get to plug it, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You, they you get to go out, and um, they're basically each brewery is serving a half pour of beer. Okay. Um, there's six breweries involved, well, five breweries and one site area. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, um, it's three hours, so six to nine. It'll be in the dark, so we will give flashlights. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Do you make it progressively? Storage parties go out at night there. Yeah. <laughs> Is it progressively harder to find the next <laughs> Make it harder as you go along at each stage yeah, exactly. to find the next beer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, are there any other questions at all? Or no, I'm just run, running the running the packet against the checklist. It looks like we've got them covered. Commissioner, health agent, not serving. Police chief's recommendation. Liability. Well, that's established. No, that's, that's, that's the reason we create those procedures, right? Yep. So we can go through Absolutely and check right. them off and make sure. Yep. Especially with all the other paperwork, it's easy to miss right. something sometimes. Right, right, right. Yeah, no issue at all. Um, yeah, we're all here. Okay, one day and the times, 6 to 9.30, uh, Mike's Maze, uh, beer tasting maze event. It's a, and it's a ticketed and uh, capped the number of, a number of people. Yes. That, that's Maybe important. 300 guests. Okay. okay. I have no questions, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, since we're the only ones here, you want to yeah, make a motion? I'll make the motion. Uh, move to grant the one-day liquor license as it's requested. That's for uh, 1027, the hours from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. down at Mike's Maze. Uh, this is just that uh, window, and it is a malt only, and it is uh, for business enterprise. All right. uh, I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero on that one. Got it. Thanks. Thanks right, so much. Thanks. Have, a, have a great night. Um, do it. Curiosity. When can I pick that? Um, tomorrow. You can yes, sign yeah. it yep. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow morning. Okay. Right. Thanks so much, y'all. All right. Thanks. Have a great night. Okay. And next, next we turn our heads to the Sage and Wise Finance Committee. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> we apparently like y'all are. So, okay. so can we? We're going to have to have a, we're going to just have to call.
call a, a separate meeting. Okay. For the, for the, uh, for the meeting meeting. Okay. okay. So are there, if I could, Mr. Chair, are there questions that come up about uh, the actual mm -hmm. warrant? And if so, there are only a couple that are, are uh, finance related. Two of them are from existing, two of them are from actually existing uh, revenue streams. One is stabilization, that's Article 2, and the other is actually paying a bill we didn't appropriate. That is the last lease payment. That comes from capital stabilization. The borrowing authorization for Article 1 uh, is going to be, all, it's contingent on about 14 things all lining up. So, and if, if, they don't, if they don't line up, it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> exactly, exactly. exactly. Exactly, exactly, 14. So I think it's a, from, a, from, a, from the board's, from my perspective as a member of the board, conveying uh, toward the review from the Finance Committee, that largest of those numbers right there uh, would be an, a maximum appropriation if the project moved forward and there was no alternate funding sources, which is not likely. So that number is likely to be considerably less. So that's just important to bear in mind as you go through your deliberations. Yeah, exactly right. So peg access, if you look at Article 3, we, we, did, we didn't, because of accounting, we actually didn't, um, in years past, it was a pass-through from our license agreement with Comcast. This year, accounting, we have to have an input. We know we get those revenues from the license agreement, but now we have to actually appropriate them from, so they're accounted for. Price hasn't changed. It's a new practice uh, coming from the state accounting, for it's, and that's, that's really all it is. Um, highway department holder is the last year's payment. We simply didn't have it on the warrant or the annual. And then engineering fees on Article 5, we're going to talk about here in a little bit. That number may actually be low, but as is the case with uh, engineering in the past, uh, actually engineering, we're about 1,000 on that. If, if, uh, the engine, if the appropriation is approved, it's going to be more than enough to deal with any potential escalations. And so we want to, the Capital Improvement Committee met what, Thursday, Dan? Wednesday. Anyway, last week. Mm -hmm. And that, we think that $10,000 number for you know, a quarter of a million dollars worth of work is probably too low. We're going to bring forward a $20,000 number. <clears throat> Again, to, nothing worse in my experience than going to town meeting saying, we'll, we'll never come back to do this again, and then mm -hmm. in five months you're back doing it again. Right. And, and the number of times we <clears throat> come back and ask for an amount right. and had it be less, and then we Consider can just return it, it back, yep. which, is, yep. which is easier than That's exactly going right. the other way. Exactly right. So again, mm -hmm. as we go through, there's a financial team meeting on Monday morning, 7.30 a.m.? Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that composite group will, will make sure the funding sources are available, what the impacts of borrowing would look like, et cetera, to bring forward to uh, the special. And that includes, that includes a member from the Finance Committee. So even if it's the night of the show for the articles, uh, for the motions, it certainly won't be for lack of information. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Anything else you guys want to add at all right now? Or? Okay. <laughs> we'll, see, uh, we'll see you guys in about a week or so then, probably. Right. Uh, go down and review the actual warrant articles. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. These are motions. I get steps all mixed up. These, you know, the, the article's approved and posted. The warrants are approved and posted, so that's done. Uh, these are actually the motions. And again, uh, the moderator, he's got the motions in front of us. Bob, do you have a copy also of the, the warrant? Okay, I got it. It's easy. These will, these the will get us there. The motions are there if you, if you need them. I think it's sent them to mm -hmm. So we're just going to go through the motions now, huh? <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist that one. It was just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, right out of the I park. Do we, I don't think I have a copy of the, the warrant, warrant purged. Okay. <clears throat> There's a... Uh, I can... The original warrant you want? Yeah. Do we want to have...
pathways talk about the backstory of Article One? Yeah, I think they'll be. Yeah, right. And there's there's, the article there's a lot of whereases and communities and a long list of things, but for David, if you want to see the maybe maybe this, maybe the, maybe the cliff you. notes of how we got to this point where we actually have a warrant article and we actually are going to ask for money and how many hours and uh, goodwill and high energy went into it. Yeah, you're going to have to talk about it again. Um, <laughs> Come on down. And do you want to do that? Uh, do that now? Yeah. 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 You got Article One, so we may as well. Alrighty. So we've got a couple of members. A few of them are wearing multiple hats. Uh, uh, Dan is already uh, also on the committee. Um, so this is uh, is a project that's been going on for a number of years. When the Pathways Committee began um, getting together three or four years ago, um, one of the things that we really recognized was um, uh, a desire to try to create more walking opportunities for people in town and to connect to the river. Um, more actively and we're doing two things really right now that relate to that one is um, the um, renovation of the boat launch that uh, the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife is going to be undertaking hopefully this um, within the next few weeks so that that will be <coughs> repaved in a more attractive um, as well as more stable and ecologically uh, sound um, um, space. Um, and then the second piece that we wanted to do was begin to connect um, the boat launch with um, the ball fields through a little natural surface pathway there. And so as we began working with a landscape architect um, and, and seeking out monies to help us um, do that, um, we uh, landed on this uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts Park Grant, which is designed to be able to help um, communities improve athletic fields um, uh, and other recreational spaces. Um, there, uh, that application required that there be really a much larger design, a master plan that accompanied um, um, uh, the project and so we worked with uh, the landscape architect uh, and had a number of uh, folks uh, engaged in the conversation around what this larger master plan would be. So that's uh, a plan that I think the select board has seen before. You see elements um, of it in, in um, um, this document, but the, the large plan um, looked at anything from reorienting ball fields to be more uh, take best advantage of sun and as well as a number of other improvements parking improvements circulation improvements um, as well as the uh, the trail improvements that we've talked about um, and um, so we had submitted that um, as part of the application I think that's created a little bit of confusion in the community that people are thinking oh you're doing something with the ball fields. We need those ball fields right now. We need this. What are you doing about the, um, the volleyball um, thing? What's, you know, so there's a bunch of different um, questions about that larger plan. Um, that is not what we're pursuing at this point. Um, those are, that really frames and provides context, I think, for the um, small phase one that, uh, that we would be looking to do at this point. So they, uh, the phase one proposal is really focusing on what we think of as the skeleton of the project, which is that um, riverfront pathway, a viewing um, um, area from that, um, as well as some circula um, circulating paths within the ball field area that do not impact any of the current infrastructure, ball fields, um, soccer field, um, uh, uh, restroom facilities, et cetera. So that's really what we're going for at this point. Um, one of the other pieces that has um, uh, elicited some comments has been the notion of some sort of uh, access way um, to the east side of um, the Veterans Memorial. Um, there was some concerns that if that was a, a two-way road in particular, um, that that would be an awful lot of activity going past what should be a fairly solemn location there. Um, we have not made any final decisions there and would not um, uh, do anything related to that without really engaging the community and seeing what we've got um, for funds that come from the Commonwealth. Um, but that could be something as simple as uh, really just a pedestrian access 
um, from there, as opposed to a vehicular access. It might be something that is reminiscent of the, uh, the access over to the elementary school coming from South Main Street, where it is emergency vehicles and really pedestrian and bicycle access um, only. Um, one of the reason we had even thought about doing something there was um, that there had been a fair amount of discussion in the public forums that we held on these projects about parking and how do you deal with boat launch parking, particularly with a rehabilitated boat launch that's more attractive, um, as well as soccer, baseball, library, and all of the activities that are going here. So I, I think that is a key that we ought to be looking at and thinking about down the road. How do we manage circulation um, um, uh, for all of those activities during busy uh, times? Um, if we receive funds from the Commonwealth, and we're, we've gotten good signs there, but we also know that the Commonwealth has got very limited dollars, uh, even compared to previous years, so we are not expecting uh, uh, a lot uh, there. Just the um, expectations. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to lower our expectations there. And, and so once we see what kind of, of um, grant we might get, I think it's going to require thinking about what are the key elements. Um, I would say that our top priority is trying to create that riverway walk between the boat launch and the ball fields. And if there is resources to be able to go beyond that, then, um, then we continue to do that. But um, as you said, Scott, there's there's a lot in the air um, about this and, and many contingencies appropriately um, on this one. Um, the first step in the process is to make sure we've got the authorization in place here. Without that, the Commonwealth will not um, grant anything. Um, we'll then see what they grant and begin to adjust our plans and, and the finances um, uh, as necessary. If I could, Mr. Chair, to, to, get to Gary's point um, that the vote of this town meeting is, it's, it's the chicken and the egg piece, yeah. right? No vote, no application, don't even bother. Right. You know, no application, you, you don't know how much money you're going to be able to get, and you, you don't have a plan anymore. You don't have, you don't have a funding source. So again, this, this particular vote here, this Article 1, is contingent on an arm's length list of steps and it's really driven by the fact that the application requires the town to have more than just the CPA for the engineering. We've got to be able to do something. And this vote here, this 295-683, is essentially the construction estimate for this phase Gary's describing. Not what we plan on, on getting after with respect to spending. And I think that's really important to just continue that, that drumbeat. You can't have one. We can't have one without the vote. We don't know what the vote's going to be, the total value of the vote's going to be, without the actual application of the park grant submitted. And then it's approval. So it's the, yeah. a little tension between the two. Yeah. But, um, Could end up being a big nut if they choose to pay for everything. Or if something falls through, it's still a big nut. And at a future right. time meeting, you simply go back and you rescind the article and it's borrowing. You didn't do right. anything. And, and I think, uh, like you were saying earlier, too, this is <coughs> trying to get the foundational elements in, and, and it's a phased approach so that we can take, you know, if we can't do it all immediately, we can start with getting the foundation pieces in and then chip away at right. the other pieces as we need to. It, exactly. And if That's at important. some point in the future other um, uh, officials within the town, other you know, the recreation um, group or others want to pursue other elements, awesome. You've got a framework for right. thinking right. about right. that, and the space has been allocated, but it would really require their leadership and, and their vision mm -hmm. to uh, to then pursue that. But we've, we've created, a, you know, sort of a broad vision for the entire space. And, and I think that's important rather than just approaching it piecemeal as, you know, oh, we have a little money here, let's do that. And it, it's better to have a, a holistic approach to the whole thing, and then you can tackle it as you can financially. I think that's that's an important thing. Right, and when pe when somebody wants to donate a memorial tree or a memorial bench, we know where to put it. Exactly, <laughs> you know, you know, or a ball happens. field, right? You know, exactly. Whatever you feel, <laughs> you know, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and that's. Uh, may I just add something about the article that um, the first in the first sentence it says appropriate. But we're not actually asking for any town funds. 
Um, it's the only reason we have to appropriate is because it's a reimbursement grant, so that um, uh, the town would have to uh, pay the bills and then we'll get reimbursed for them. Um, and, but we're not the only town funds that would be committed would be the interest if we have to borrow the money borrow. for like a month or two until we get reimbursed. I, I was just going to say that, right? It's not like we're saying, oh, we want $300,000 right now, you know? No. So please do not think that, you know, because I know sometimes this was, oh, they're looking, somebody's looking for 300000 for this, and it's not, it's not right. the case. So if anybody has questions, contact somebody who's involved, do your homework, and, and yeah. just make sure that... And, like and, that's and I think clear. that's going to be really important at town yeah. meeting because, because you have to read a long way down. <laughs> right. it. Well, you do, right. <laughs> Before it's, you see, oh, but there's well, this it's, caveat. Right. And, right. and like Scott was saying, there's so, a lot of... Um, that. That's really important. Yeah, it's that's definitely true. <laughs> so we're not really spending the money. It's an authorization. It's, wait, it's the best word to use. It's just, <laughs> yes, it's it's just an authorization, it. but we could still end up borrowing it. If... All the other Paying stars whatever on. interest do. <laughs> yeah. And then, where does the reimbursement come from? The state. This park grant? Yes. Uh, yeah, the Commonwealth, yeah. Okay. What's the maximum length of time we can expect to f before we find out if, you know, say... If, if it's approved? If 12 yeah. out of our contingencies are met and then the last one caves. Right. Sure. What's well, the maximum? It's a great point, actually. The, yep. the park grant process probably is the answer to that question. You know, right? yes. If you go from the park grant process, it also sets the scope and the timeline. So, I mean, and yeah. I, I. Yeah, and, and um, they that, typically right? announce these somewhere in the December time horizon. So, by the first of the year, we ought to know um, as we receive that or not. Two months then. Yeah. yeah, but then what we, but then we're going to need to apply for CPA, the matching funds from CPA, and that would be at the for, at the next town meeting. Right. Yeah. So we wouldn't Spring. know. We wouldn't have the matching funds secured until the end of April. Like any of these projects, it's definitely a longer term project with a longer timeline too, and. And I think also, too, that this is one of the things that we've sort of mentioned this before, too, is it's not just about working on a ball field or an isolated park. This is really our de facto town center, really, because of how the town's been cut up. So, and, you know, this will be used for, you know, if we ever rein, reinstate our fall festival, things like that. There's a number of things that we can get use out of. Right. And, and we've thought about those things as well as... Um, you see some popular walking routes within town that are emerging. The, right. uh, the North Silver, um, North Main right. um, loop is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. um, we've now got the elderly housing going in nearby. Um, right. This really adds a loop um, that uh, <coughs> connects to the river, has beautiful views of Sugarloaf, and, and passes through that you know, town common space. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things we've been thinking about with um, the whole um, ball field complex and in this area between the library and the Veterans Memorial and, and this um, building and the ball fields, it would be nice to have that all feel like it welcomes all generations of town as opposed to, oh, that if you don't have kindergartners to, uh, to elementary school who are playing sure. soccer or... Um, or baseball, you know, there's no reason for me to go there. So we would really love to help this space feel more accessible and desirable for um, all generations of town. If I, if I could piggyback yeah. on that. It's important to bear in mind this is the implementation of a fair amount of land swapping, eminent domain work, multiple annual town meeting articles from two town meetings prior to this, where we actually were able to secure the land with the help of a, of a friendly neighbor mm -hmm. and help of uh, the state with respect to the boat launch. So all of the acquisitions came into play. I wish I had little colored oh, yeah. pieces. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> A, B, and C. A, B, and C, exactly. So this actually, right, this, take, this takes that, this takes that um, the original vision of making a cohesive piece of property for recreation and now has a plan for implementing what to do with it. And a simple pathway and resting area and accessibility across the, and up and down the riverbank to that point 
is really what this is in support of. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. uh, may I just add also, um, this Saturday at 10 o'clock, uh, we're going to uh, be offering tours of the, of the river walk. It, it, it's a, a primitive path now, sure. we, it, it, but it's walkable. Nice. It's just not, it's not wheelchair accessible yeah. now. The, the vision is to have it be wheelchair accessible. Nice. And, um, but but um, we'll, we're going to be showing the uh, path to folks, um, mm -hmm. and we'll have refreshments here at the town offices this Saturday f between 10 and 11. Okay. Oh, a, did you get your license? Although more people would come, <laughs> it, it's a bring bring your own refreshment to the supplements, you know. But and th this also kind of makes me too like so if we step back up to like the thirty thousand foot level too, this is sort of also ties into Article Four believe it or not, because that's tied to our complete streets, and we'll sort of see a connection there, because like run, keeping the town running isn't just about paying the bills and making, just keeping our heads above water. It's also about having a vision, a goal, where, and an idea of where we want to be in the future, what kind of town we want to be. And um, this is all part of it. It is trying to improve the way of life in our town. I mean, you know, it's... If we all just sat around on our laurels, we never would have gotten out of caves, right? So, I mean, you know, this is all part of looking for the, towards the future and trying to build a better town for those who come after us. And hopefully we'll get to enjoy some of it while we still can, you know? So I think, I think this, this is important. And you have to step back and look at all of the different pieces like mm -hmm. this with the North Main Street project going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different um, pieces going on that... When you look at them in isolation, you may not see the connections until you step back and then yeah, connect all the dots and look at it. And then it's, <laughs> we're trying to, trying to make this a better world, you know, a better town. So we've got to start somewhere. If, if, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. one more point on, on this particular article. Uh, the town of Sunderland wouldn't be even eligible for a park grant if it wasn't, wasn't for the work Sarah had done four years ago on getting us with our open space and land use plan. The plan in place, yeah. right? Because you have to have plans and organizations. We, we applied, we were in the process of applying for our park grants with respect to uh, Sugarbush Meadows oh. and uh, not eligible. And Sarah and a handful of others jumped right on that. And uh, now we are. No. So, so thanks for yeah. that. Thank you. Well, Nancy Pick wrote the open space mm -hmm. and recreation plan, mm -hmm. but our committee did the transportation and circulation right. plan, which was a really important framework mm -hmm. for for then the complete mm -hmm. streets. That was oh. required for complete mm -hmm. streets. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a startup too. You know, yes. you're going to go to a venture capitalist where you need to have a plan mm -hmm. in place, and that's sort of what all these things are, are yeah. kind of like. See, at our last meeting when you and Nancy were there, she okay. said. <laughs> so this, this is, this is, this is, I have to come back yeah. and make sure to make sure support I have to exactly yeah. right. on, on that yeah. note, may I just add that on Friday I got to witness our dear Sherry Patch receiving an award from the uh, county, the Mike Fritz Award for uh, Community, yes. community. Well, they com for Community Development. We recognize yeah. all the all of these um, initiatives and everything she's pulled together in the last two a years. A lot of good people doing a lot of good work. So, so, so it's so the work of many. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Sherry. It's a beautiful award. You'll have to come in her office and take a look. It's all oh, hand yeah. hand carved. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. Somebody it's had time on their hands. Yeah. <laughs> or a three D printer. Yeah. It's a traveling award and we only get to keep it for one year, so Brilliant. we will oh, proudly okay. display it in nice. the office for one year and then give it back to the next recipient. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's probably appropriate to give a little shout out to the US Fish and Wildlife for that boat ramp because that was sort yes. of a, a nice another key foundational piece and it's a, yeah. and I, I like you know, stressing the connection to the river because a lot of communities along here, while they may be on the river, you know, and I think of when I drive through every day back and forth to work through Springfield, it's on the river, but it's not connected to the river at all. Yeah. And that's a shame. So. so you know that works a step closer because it was posted in uh, one week ago, Central Register. Oh. So it's, it's actually made it to the bid list. So. Oh, wow. That's good. That's great. Okay. okay. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the backstory. I think that's going to be important. The sequence of timing and a kind of a handout for a special town meeting is going to be important. And I've sent that down. That's one that we have right now. Uh, if that captures the information that you that is needed, the kind of questioning, that's what we'll have for a uh, town meeting. 
Yeah, I have, I have a new version that the, the print is a little larger. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We like that. Thanks very much. I did on two pages, it's yes. so smart. Okay. <laughs> Question on section B. I'm assuming that's just a house cleaning, keeping article, just cleaning up who has control of Correct. this area. That's exactly right. It, assi it, assi it assigns those duties, Bob. Okay. It's always important so somebody's not wondering afterwards. Right. So again, it's important to bear in mind, this isn't the land transferring bit. We haven't, we, we've done that. That's behind us. This is the legal ease that allow us, this is the lawyer's version of the yeah. motion to make sure that we don't get ourselves in trouble at town, special town meeting. Yeah. Okay, well, questions about our, Article One? If not, I'll make a motion to uh, recommend the motion as presented. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor of Article One? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. On to Article Two. Thank, Thank you again so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Um, and this is for the vote to transfer twelve thousand three hundred ninety-eight dollars from stabilization from the stabilization account for the purpose of funding the conversion of existing street lights to energy efficient and long-lasting LEDs, including all incidental and related expenses, seem to be spent under the direction of the town administrator. So this is. Upgrading our lighting, uh, and this is tied to a green communities grant, Yep, right? this is uh, the LED streetlight conversion grant. Um, at the annual town meeting, we appropriated funds to buy the streetlights, which made us eligible for this program uh, for the conversion part. And the retrofit portion of that grant is $11,426. Um, so the total project cost the um, streetlight went up a little bit in price because we didn't meet the 180 day threshold so the new price is $9,604 so we were short um, $972 so if you add that with the $11,426 um, you get the total $12,398 a portion of that is a grant and the other portion is a utility incentive from Eversource. So, so what's the net like that the town would be expending after, like out of that? Uh, the net amount will be $20,058. Okay. It's important to bear in mind you're talking about realizing 12,000 kilowatt hours of annualized savings. Yeah, it was just with, with yep. a, what's essentially a, essentially a four year payback total. Yeah. Right. Just four year payback. Total. If you stretched it out, it'd be about four years. They calculated it at three and a half, but mm -hmm. you got to reset the clock when they finally everything gets turned on. So, twelve plus thousand a year we appropriate for street lights. You're talking about cutting it by nearly half. Half, yeah. Yeah, and and I think we really see the benefit of that on every bill cycle. That's right, we would see it as right. So this is a really it right away. it's a good point. In the uh, operating budget. Yep. As soon as they get turned on, the budget the budget expense drops. Good point. Um, and again, this is from stabilization, and we have the twelve thousand uh, to start. We have about six hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars in stabilization right now. That's a, that's a good point to just give that as a reference. Right. So, yeah. Uh, move move to recommend Article Two. Move to recommend the motion for Article Two. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. If I could, uh, on this on this subject, there's a there is a vote of the capital planning committee to recommend this as well. Capital planning committee recommendation was was unanimous, but there was questions about the oh, yes. there was you. questions about the mechanism. If we're saving money on existing streetlight inventory, what's the mechanism if someone wants to a uh, citizen or a business wants to actually have a streetlight uh, reinstalled? Remember, we had a number of streetlights removed, nearly half of our inventory in 2010, essentially the 2009 budget cycle. And uh, we did do that homework. We did. We will have that uh, as part of a handout. If, if there's an inventory that's being reviewed now by public safety as well as by the utility to make sure it's correct, 
and it's going to be um, there's a fundamental change in this adoption of the statute the fact that we are going to own the street lights we're not leasing them any longer from the utility so our installation cost is going to be a town born cost and then a hundred and fifty dollar connection fee after review by the utility to make sure it's correct right you're on the right pole you're at the right height there's the right infrastructure on that pole so there is a mechanism for adding street lights not that that's necessarily the goal of this authorization but there was a great line of questioning that came out of capital improvement committee well, what happens if so that was a uh, again I, I i really enjoy working with that group anyway i wanted to put that out there mr chair no i'm, I'm glad you did yeah because it, it's sort of one of those aspects of you know, a way to get back something sure. that we lost. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may feel we lost you know, right. back, back then and actually not pay anymore. There was also a lot of discussion about the quality of the light to make sure that we're getting apples yes. and apples. We're not putting up stadium lighting on poles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because the, and there's, there's always been a lot of discussion like the brightness compared to <coughs> if the, the color can change your interpretation a lot exactly of, right. of the brightness. Great point. You said the town is going to own the lights. Yep. Yeah, we formed a municipal light at one of our town meetings. Who, who's going to install them? That's part yeah, of the, the that's grant. Yeah, part is, of the grant. Yeah, the grant is the install. I mean, does the power company install them? On this, on the original direct replacement, the answer is yes. In the future, if yep. you wanted a street light, You'd contact the town, we'd contact, the town would contact the utility, ensure it's the correct pole, ensure it's the right infrastructure, then the town does it and leaves it dead. So for the town the then has to hire an electrician or yeah. whatever, yeah. Yeah. a line person. And right. Effectively, the utility is getting out of the streetlight business at the municipal level. Yeah. <coughs> How many street lights do we have? 68? 63. I always say 68. Yeah, 63. But part of the grant process is they're going to actually audit the existing inventory and make sure we have what what is documented, the size or the wattage of the bulbs and all of those things. So. And how do we know that Well, that's, that's actually the reason we've asked yeah. the police chief, the fire chief, as well as George to go around the towns and look at intersections again and make sure that areas that in 2009 and 10 when they were removed it was based on the recommendation from public safety to make sure that we weren't really putting ourselves in a in a difficult position the question now is where where if any would go in after this grant would be the same people making the same review how does this connect to the uh the, the new housing that's going to be installed as part of the the uh, adult the senior senior not campus. related those are going to be private yeah that's all private yep yeah this is really just replacing existing yes units. everywhere you see a street light now it's going to get an updated and more efficient version it's just I, I just I was meaning in terms of them wanting to yeah. add new lights that's sure. going to be on them yeah exactly right I'm sure we probably have to look at some kind of fee or something for that to help. Yeah, we have to cover our own cover costs. costs. Yeah. Purchase the fixture, town's going to own it, so all of those things. Exactly. So, so that's a pro procedure I'm sure that the board will be developing. Yep. When we're taking down, uh, we took the down. You know, we're looking for that, that spreadsheet. I want to say it was it was between 40 and 50% of the streetlights were removed. It's, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. 2010, you yeah. said. Yeah, around there. And I think, too, one of the options, um, too. Sorry, 2000, yeah, 2010 10. calendar year. Yeah. I think one of the options, too, we have with some of the newer lighting, too, is, is you're able to get the lighting down without it just splashing out everywhere as much as, like, the old fixtures did, so. But again, more questions for town meeting. In this case here, it's just a direct replacement and a direct energy efficiency. But again, I applaud the Capital Planning Committee for asking those kinds of questions like, well, what happens? Mm -hmm. Got us all thinking, gave us homework. Next up, FCAT wants money. <laughs> you know, you know, talk to the, the, the statute here. This doesn't, 
if, if I could, Mr. Uh, Chair, this doesn't yeah. change your budgeting process, doesn't change your no. values. This is a function, again, as I said earlier, of the peg access funds used to flow directly to FCAP. New accounting rules. New accounting rules. This is all this is. So we have the input. We know the revenue stream. But prior to this year, we didn't necessarily have to appropriate that as a budgetary line item. Now we do. And it's that simple. One There's more line on the worksheet. One more line in the worksheet. <laughs> exactly right. So uh, to their credit, FCAT's been patient with respect to their most recent invoicing while we go about this appropriation. Chris is working without, money, without pay right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um, we should check and see if we're really on no, back then. No, we're, we're really not. He's, he's showing it. Renan Stempy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that'll probably get more watching. Good. <laughs> people, right? so. uh, I'll make a motion to uh, recommend Article 3, the, recommend the motion in support of Article 3. All right. Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Ah, now on to Article 4, which is for the final payment on our holder tractor, sort of a lease slash purchase one. Um, and this one, we've actually paid for this out of our highway, so we'll be essentially transferring from stabilization back to the highway so they have some funds to continue the year. All right, to cover that. Mm. What's the original appropriation from capital stabilization sharing? And if we could just check on that before the actual special town meeting. Okay. I think it was from capital stabilization to offset Definitely. the borrowing. Yeah. So we need to make sure there's available revenues in there. It's always a good practice. So you hope it's from capital stabilization, think, not think, from regular. I think that okay. was the case. Yep. Okay. I believe that's where we've been appropriating it from because it was a debt authorization for a piece of equipment. Okay. Yeah. So it's from capital stabilization. I believe it is, yeah. I believe it should be. That would make sense. Yeah. Nice time. Um, again, we'll, we'll, check on, we'll check on the availability of those funds. Again, I think there's monies in there for it. I'm assuming this holder tractor is that funny looking thing that they plow the side yeah, That one. <laughs> That's it. And a bunch of other yeah, yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a number of attachments. There's a bunch of attachments. Yeah. And it seems to be holding up well. I haven't heard any complaints about it at all. So that's always a good sign in good. service. When you don't hear something, it's usually good. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because now it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just right. a kiss of death yeah. right there. Don't do it. But again, uh, yeah. this is this is a, this is an installment debt that we have we have been paying and um, I'm not sure we are on this. This is the last one, maybe? Yeah, this is, is the final yeah. payment. Oh, okay. Was it four? Four final payments, payment. I think. Four. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, move uh, to recommend the motion of Article 4. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Then again, we'll confirm capital stabilization. Uh, and then Article 5, our last one, is... To move that the town vote to transfer 10,000 from state the regular stabilization for costs associated with the design and engineering services for the implementation of our complete streets projects. If, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah, uh, the Capital Improvement Committee again voted to recommend this uh, unanimously. Uh, what had expressed concern that for the $260,000 worth of grant that we have. 296000 Yeah, my number's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> nearly $300,000 worth of a grant to be implemented. The engineering uh, requirements, uh, contract review, and site uh, visits to ensure compliance with the grant, we felt that the $10,000 was probably too low. That represents less than 5% of total project cost and traditionally with uh, engineering and uh, management you're in that nearly 10 percent mark so the capital improvement committee recommended is recommended that we take this 10,000 and make the article 20 knowing that it's an appropriation but we don't have to spend it if you don't spend it it just stays in stabilization versus having we have some, several proposals in front of us uh, later in our packet uh, and they range from several thousand dollars to to more than this ten thousand dollars. So I would I would recommend I would if it's the prerogative of the board, I'd recommend that we change this from ten to twenty. Yeah, but uh, left getting caught underfunded. Uh, yeah, exactly. You run, run short of engineering fees on a grant application, and this one's got to be implemented by the end of the calendar year. Correct. Uh, the construction has to be done by September thirtieth. So. You want to be going back to town meeting asking for to 
pay the engineer or architect again. Right. So mm -hmm. if, if, if it's a prerogative of the board, again, I, I, the CIC recommendation was to change that number up somewhere between sixteen and $20,000. I would say $20,000 knowing that we don't have to spend it, but we have it at least appropriated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, can you remind me what district complete street project is? Oh, Great sure. point. Uh, the complete streets improvements project is to uh, make the streets safer, more walkable. So we have five projects that were funded, and they're in various different sections of town, South Main Street and River road there's sidewalk extension improvements there's some crosswalk improvements um, there's um, access to transit um, we're going to put in a covered bus stop at one of the locations uh, basically most of it is sidewalk extensions and crosswalks um, and crosswalk improvements it's kind of the state's way of trying to take a new approach to Chapter street work and right rather than just tossing money out there and having it be mostly used for roads and things like that it's trying to take a more uh, modern and holistic approach and say you know we, we don't just get around by car people take bus they walk yeah. and trying to There's address bike, bike um, and trying to address yeah, all of those modes of transportation so so when Bob's cut his 1890s vintage the mono, right. monocycle with a big wheel in the front, driving down yeah. the street. Yeah. And, uh, the sidewalk will be ready for you. But when George is going down the street in the wagon, we're going to get sidewalks on uh, Plum Tree Road. Uh, actually, that was one of the elements that we applied for, and it didn't get approved. But it doesn't stop us from applying it again. Yeah, because that is some, heavily. Because it's some some down to Hadley by the apartments. Road. Yep, yeah. it's definitely on our longer term. Yeah, it's on the list. It's just um, it was expensive, Plumtree, right? It's way down yes. at the bottom because of cost. Yeah, because yeah. there's some issues as we get farther down towards 116, yeah. right, with the right of way and things like that. I think, right? But it is there, so yeah, <clears throat> it's a start. But Bob, you keep raising those points, and I hope the residents of Plumtree keep raising those points for this board and yep. hopefully this board if it's completed. But this board or future boards to work on that infrastructure. And again, it's it is in our multi-element, multimodal plan. Yeah. Oh, that is it. If it's all right, Mr. Chair, to yeah. move that up to twenty thousand yeah. dollars. <clears throat> okay. If that's the case, again, this would be from straight stabilization. This is engineering. Document review, project implementation planning, some third third party engineer would be hired. We that would be actually our hire, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any other questions at all before we right. yeah. uh, move to recommend the motion of Article five at twenty thousand uh, dollars. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, to summarize the special town meeting, we got we got two carryover articles from the annual. Right? We need, we need to make sure there was an appropriation for FCAT. And we needed to make sure there was an appropriation for the debt service on the holder. That's pretty straightforward. We, you know, that's, that's ours. We own that one. Now, and it's a point of information. The warrant hasn't been posted, has it? Mm -hmm. Then, just a procedural thing is, how can you increase from ten to 20000 This is the motion. This is the motion. There's no numbers in the... Right. Good question. We can we can ask that because it would be the same as trying to increase mm -hmm. it on yep. town meeting floor. Yeah, and if, if 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 we can't, it's a prerogative of the moderator or the prerogative of of the of the body. Then you know we'll just have to have to have to find another way. The article um, that's posted doesn't specify a source or an amount, so that's done in the motion. Oh, it doesn't? No, nope. it oh, just says to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer from available funds, borrow or otherwise provide a sum of money for costs associated with design and engineering services for implementation. Okay, we're we're clear right. then. Okay. That's why she gets awards. <laughs> <laughs> But it's good. To, it's, I'm glad you asked it. You know what I mean. You don't want to. If it was posted and we were raising it, it's oh, it's yeah. a universal concern. Absolutely. It's always right. a good idea to yep. not do that. <laughs> Much better to ask the question than not. 
find out later if we were wrong. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, next up we have, let's see. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for talking. And we'll have you guys have suggestions about handout information. Just you know, let us know whether it's the uh, scope from the DOT or Sarah's reworked version. We want to make sure to have as, as much and as good quality information for special town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Any feedback is important. It sounds like you're already ready with a million <laughs> words of explanation for the language. Right? Well, <laughs> that one there's a tongue twister. I first yeah. saw it come back. I thought to myself. That's why lawyers make the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Um, on the minutes, can we put off the one for September 25th? Sure. Call it again? Okay. Yeah, just because Tom's not here. We can, we can do both sets of minutes, actually. Yeah, until next time. Yeah, yeah, until Tom's back. Not, not critical. Okay. Um, and then. On to board updates. Uh, Want to go or? No, go ahead. I've already talked way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, last week we had our second of our, um, our town branding exercise. Oh, nice. Because we have this essentially paid for through a grant. Mm -hmm. So um, it's... Uh, I, We'll have to see how much of it we end up using, but any of it is beneficial, I think, to, to the town. And it was it was a, it was a good exercise. Um, it, it's like any other branding exercise. Um, you have to work on what you know what you like. The last time we were um, in our, what, our ideation phase, mm -hmm. as they call it, you know, so coming up with ideas of what, what you think the town means to us and things like that. But it it it, it kind of fits in with a lot of the other things that we're doing. Um, it gets looking at things like signage. Hmm. Um, well, definitely a lot of, on, on the signage part, really. But also, you know, essentially ways that really to market the town. And I think uh, it's definitely a helpful uh, exercise. And we've got another I don't know when our next meeting is going to be. but He's going to work on developing. He's going to come up with this plan. Designs for Designs yeah. based on the workshop and then present them to the committee. And I think maybe after that, I'll, um, I'll, I can present some of that at our next meeting, which, just good. to get an idea of what we're, what we're looking at and everything. Let's see where we are on that one. And then Monday, we had our personnel committee. Oh, nice. Pers <laughs> personnel committee meeting. So we kicked that off. And um, one of the things that we, we agreed we're going to really sort of step back for some, to some fundamental things. And I think one of the key things we want to cover first is... Um, in the process of like reviews is our comp towns. Let's reanalyze the comp towns mm -hmm. and then make sure with this board too and everybody else that we're all in agreement on the right set of comp towns to use, their characteristics and things like that. Because what we're trying to get at is, like a, we've done with other things, a process. Mm -hmm. So that we're not sort of scrambling every several years right. saying, oh, do we hire somebody? Do we do this? And try to come up with a process and also make sure that we're in agreement on the key fundamentals used in the process. So that way when, you know, we're essentially all arguing about, we're not arguing about core components that we use to execute the process. Mm -hmm. So that we're then, then we're just essentially arguing about, okay, how are we going to fund it? Should we fund it? And focus those, I think, in the right place. Because I, I, that'll... That'll help us be a lot more productive, I think, in the process. Job descriptions, those kinds of things. Yep. Make sure they're equal impaired, hours worked, all that. It, it's delicate. Right. You, you just kind of unpull. You kind of look is. at that mosaic every mm -hmm. year. And, and, and things shift. And, and we know that, like, you know, while you have to compare things like the descriptions, you know, at some point, you know, certain aspects aren't going to all be the same. So you kind of have to say, okay, we're comparing job A. Will accept you know up to you know eighty percent has to be Got it. comparable yep. for us to use that. Sure. Um, so I think last year was was a good learning experience. I'll say you know in, in that respect. And I think we really need to come up with a process, and and I also kind of want to put use this as a push to kind of reach outward regionally a little bit because I think this kind of stuff is. It seems like we all go through the same exercises every so many years, and I just look at it and I think, gosh, there's got to be a better way. 
you know, why can't we have some kind of central repository for all the information that we can all just, you know, periodically update? Once you get it updated and in there, you know, into some kind of usable database, then we just do our regular update. So then we can all go to one source to find out, oh, well, let's do a check. It just seems like we spend a lot more resources trying to redo things that we really, it could be done a lot better. You know, well, we got an earlier start this year, and that's a plus. We did. And, that helps us. And yeah. In particular with the system review, not necessarily, you know, Sherry's job application. You're looking right. at you're looking at process, which is which is yep. this time of year where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. So then you can consider traveling. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm we'll be we'll be looking at that because yeah. um, luckily there aren't a lot of other things on the personnel committee's docket right now, so we can kind of focus on that. So I think that'll be. I don't want to say fun, but it, it'll it's, be good. It's, you know? it's a work of good governance. Yeah, it's all said and done. Right. Uh, it's, it's all of this, you know, quote unquote, boring day to day stuff right, that's right. what keep it, keeps everything running. So right. Um, right. I think that's, that's all I got for updates. We had two from last week, uh, Mr. Chair, of the, as you heard earlier, the Capital Improvement Committee uh, worked, got together. I want to thank them for an interim meeting for our normal schedule to review the uh, uh, articles and motions. And again, I want to I want to uh, express uh, my 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 great thanks for a good working group. You have uh, assessor, you've got two ad hocs, you've got a finance committee member. There's a member member representative from the board, library trustee, and look at it in capital. Capital, capital is in, in total. Back to your, your comment earlier about a process. Uh, we also have our capital budgeting about to unwind. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, about to unwind. And the uh, grant work we got through Sherry's help last year from the F Cog, FR Cog. Uh, gave us a process for looking at capital implementation over a 10, 20, and 30 year period. And that's going to be a really helpful tool for us. So we're yeah. excited to actually roll that out, spend one whole meeting just on that. As uh -huh. department heads have been notified already, capital budgeting is equal in timing to the um, operating budgets. And it's a, it's a parallel process. It's not sequential. So it gives us time to look at the capital requests as well. Yeah. Also, there was a meeting last Thursday I called in on. I got to participate via phone. Hey, hey. Nice. Yeah. Uh, from 120 North <laughs> Main, uh, the folks from RDI, the folks from uh, Berkshire, the folks, not Berkshire, Austin Designs, uh, folks from the Regional Housing Authority, uh, our, our composite group was there and uh, basically it was about updates. Uh, there was an uh, update about a site meeting that was held three or four, three weeks ago at the site with the DHCD. Uh, they had some questions uh, specific to the location of the buildings, the proposed sizes, the amount of asphalt, kind of the nitty gritty. Uh, it's important to bear in mind this also is pre-formal application. So you want to ensure that your application, although I think it was the developer from RDI said, most every first time application is rejected. It just is. There's a there's a just long mechanics. a long queue of affordable housing projects across the Commonwealth, and as we we're hearing earlier in our discussion, DCR and other state agencies are being asked to fund a lot of things. So the the 120 North meeting, 120 North Main Working Groups meeting last week was about status. How are we with the application? What do the funding sources look like? And are there any are there any uh, schematic changes to the proposal? I didn't physically see the drawings, but there was a lot of a lot of discussion about some changes in the roof line, lowering it, minimizing it, making it. So I'm okay. actually anxious to see that. Huh? Nice. So that was a good thing. And I, I would go. I would not uh, want to miss the opportunity again to thank Sherry and congratulate her for not only for thank her for her work, but congratulate her on on the award the community is a, with a, a big C, and I think in her short tenure here, she's uh, already leaving quite a mark. So re do recognition, and uh, rightly so. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and a lot of good people involved, so we're getting a lot accomplished. So we're all community builders, right? There you go. <laughs> good point. Yeah. That's all. And I think uh, you were talking about like the sort of the ten to twenty year horizon for capital planning. That, that that's important because yeah. really that's really a long term. Like all our projects are longer term in yeah. there. So that's that's very good. 
Any exciting updates? That's sure. a good I mean, segue into my update. <laughs> yeah, see? I wanted to uh, make a recommendation for the Community Compact Best Practices Program to continue with financial management and to look at um, developing and, u- and utilization of a long-range planning and forecasting model. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to um, have the board's permission to apply for that under the Community Compact um, second round. And... Um, they will um, award us technical assistance, probably through the FERCOG again, and maybe even yeah. Joe Markarian okay. to develop a long-range uh, forecasting model. And then the other um, program that I'd like we can pick two uh, is in keeping with our complete streets and uh, a lot of the projects that we have going on now is um, public accessibility best practice yep. uh, to undertake an Americans with Disabilities self-evaluation and develop a transition plan to comply with federal civil rights laws that require public buildings and programs to be accessible to people with disabilities. Um, There are grant funds that are tied into that once you develop your plan of um, up to 250,000 under one program. And um, I'm sure that the um, Complete Streets will probably be rolling out more funds as well in the future, so. And that dovetails nicely as we start to work on like the park area and Mm -hmm. And the built the public buildings that are tied to that and everything. So yeah. we have the RFP out for the um, municipal buildings assessment Good. and okay. space study. So we had um, so far, I think just about twenty five um, consultants have asked for that RFP. Okay. Um, so we'll be um, taking a look at that as well. So it all does tie in with what we're doing. That's good. It'll keep us planning and hopefully funding coming to sure. help us. Implement the plans. Exactly. So, so you're asking for a recommendation uh, for um, a vote tonight to yeah, proceed? To proceed with the Community Compact Program, Financial Management Best Practice, and Public Accessibility Best Practice. I'll move that. Uh, oh, second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I think that's good. Any additional tools we get with financial forecasting to help us manage that is always good. Great point. And along those lines, our next item is recommendation oh, I have one from more the contra- too. Oh, oh, sorry. Yep, sorry about that. No, that's right. Um, the police chief has um, sent his recommendation for trick or treat. Oh, that's right. Thank yep. you. On uh, Halloween night, October thirty-first, from five to eight p.m. And that usually kind of tends to work with when the crowds are out anyway, mm-hmm. um, because it tends. To, I mean, you know. It, I think the, the the time slot of that seems to have shrunk a little bit. So, it, it, at the risk of sounding, you know, Happy. ancient and well, <laughs> you know, it's like it seems like that we trick or treated a lot more. I think you know, years ago, it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of cut back a little bit. But that's a good a good time slot. Um, I think it's important for people as they're out and about on that night to be careful, keep your eyes up, especially along here because we don't have tons of lighting along here. So keep your eyes along Main Street especially. Um, and some of the other areas for trick-or-treaters when they're out and about. Great point. Okay. Uh, now we're hopping on to our town treasurer recommendation for OPEB Trust. Good, Mr. Chair. We've, yeah. we've, we had presentations from uh, three agencies, and uh, treasure collectors uh, worked with Bartholomew to take a handful of their basis points down and get competitive with not just the state, but also she feels uh, pretty uh, confident, in particular, in uh, their agility to respond to requests as well as the reporting functions, okay. which That's is an important, important an important piece with the OPEB. I'm, with respect to the auditors, yes. So yeah. I, I, I take uh, I take Susan's recommendation, uh, and I would like to move the recommendation to entrust uh, Bartholomew and Company with uh, the oversight of this OPEB fund. Okay. Um, I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one, Sherry. And then we have something from our. Council on the termination consent representation of the town of Sunderland Whateley and Scams intermunicipal agreement. 
So is this uh, driven by the fact that uh, KP Law also represents the town of Waitley? Yes. And we're, si we're signing essentially a, a mutual agreement yeah. saying that any inquiries with uh, in and around both towns, in this case here, SCEMS, uh, have been reviewed and there's no conflict. I capture that correctly? Sounds like a good summation. That you have determined that it would likely, it would not likely adversely affect. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make that motion to sign this determination with KP Law. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. More mechanical housekeeping uh, and structural yeah, well, things. It's you know, we, 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 sh we share, KP Law represents a lot of communities. <laughs> Nope. And at the same time, you know, when we've gone in and shared uh, uh, legal services, uh, it's a very similar document. So, um, now I think we kind of covered our community compact best practices, yeah. right? Yeah. But the tree replacement on South Main Street, though, on that one. Um, I had um, a resident stop by and ask. Um, about having, I believe there's four trees, three or four trees mm -hmm. um, that have come down or been taken down, mm -hmm. um, and what the um, procedure is to have them replaced. Sure. There are funds available, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure, so that was... Sure, there's a uh, South uh, Main Street tree group, yeah. and uh, George, and I think if you contact uh, Liz Sillen, you'd actually be able to... I, th I think she's... Still participating in that. Okay, so contact. Forgive me, Liz, if I got that wrong. Okay. <laughs> and George is the tree warden, so. Right. so. So is there a species that you yep. replace? There's, there's a recommendation okay. in there. There's the whole okay. yeah. the Hubbard Fund. So I know they're trying to get some variety. I'm sorry, Bill so Graves. Don't end up with a Dutch yeah. elm disease thing where all our trees are dying at once. Right. And I know some of them have been um, getting hit pretty hard over the years, and they're, yep. they're getting up there in age. So. Okay. Yeah, it's and it's planting staggering. season, so I told her I'd get my exactly. Dog. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no, a couple good. years for trees. <clears throat> um, and uh, we have a couple of other exciting, important dates to remember. On tomorrow, on the twenty fourth, we have a joint meeting with the Frontier member towns, select boards, and finance committees um, to go over. Uh, Capital expenditures for Frontier Regional School. Debt service, okay. Yep, and, right. So there'll be a lot of discussion over that tomorrow. So if anybody's interested in that, I'm sure that'll be televised, right? Oh, yeah. We're, we're taping it. You're taping it? Nice. Okay. So it won't be, okay. So it'll be available. You, you're loading that up um, shortly afterwards? Uh, as soon as I can get it done. Back, yeah. yeah. Um, so you'll be able to check that out on the website. But if you can, it'd be good to go to that meeting because it, there's a, there'll be a lot of good discussion on um the mechanisms uh, yeah. for fundraising and what has to be addressed in their um, their plan as well. Um, and then on October 30th, we have a special town meeting to go over the uh, five topics that we discussed tonight. Is that 6.30 at the school? 7 o'clock, the Seven special town meeting. Thank you. Yep, at uh, the gymnasium in the elementary school. And then our next select board meeting will be on, oh, it seems far away, November 11th, uh, 6th. It just seems like it's so far off. Um, that'll be November 6th. Any other uh, comments by anyone or anything? No? They're ready to go. No? All right. Um, we have a motion. Motion okay. to adjourn. Uh, grudgingly seconded. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, FCAT. <laughs>